Hello, and welcome to the Inspired Living Podcast with Ellen Broderick. Each week, we delve into a conversation with an individual who has found their passion and is pursuing it. This week, my guest is Rachel Scott. Rachel has been a yoga, yoga practitioner for over 20 years. She is a masterful yoga teacher holding two 500-hour yoga teacher training certifications. She is a teacher training with Yoga Works and with Do Yoga With Me. She is the director of Teachers College for Why Yoga, Canada's largest corporately owned yoga company, where she created their 200 and 500 hour certification programs, as well as numerous continuing education programs. She has created excellent trainings and online courses. She also leads teacher trainings in Vancouver, British Columbia. Rachel has a master's of science in instructional <clears throat> systems and learning technologies with a specialty in online learning. She is the author of five books and has appeared on numerous television shows and on podcasts. She exuberantly shares her knowledge and skills through coaching, through her blog, and through her YouTube channel and her online classes. Rachel, it's a pleasure to have you with me today. Oh, it is a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm delighted to be here. And I, I will just clarify one thing is um, yeah. I don't live in Vancouver anymore. So I oh. did run the Y Yoga teacher training. Uh, I ran, the, I was the director of their teachers training for probably, I think it was about eight years, I, which was an amazing experience. In fact, I was just up in Vancouver visiting them and gobbling up lots of classes. But then I left that job in about, I left my corporate position with them and now one of the things I do in addition to running our teacher training with do yoga with me. So that's where I host my, now I have, that's where I am a teacher trainer now online. Um, in addition to that, I help other teachers and other studios create their own teacher trainings and also yeah. online education and kind of support them in that way. Um, so that's kind of where most of my, my world is now. And now I'm located in Colorado, which is, you know, as anyone who's moved in the last couple of years knows it's such an odd experience moving right now, but also yeah. amazing to be here so yeah yeah well you've you've lived in a number of different places then too haven't you because it I think I read somewhere that you lived in New York City when uh you were first introduced to yoga or when you first delved into yoga um and I actually had a question about what brought you to the yoga world and um mm -hmm. and what's and what about yoga has changed the trajectory of your life Oh, a lot. Yeah, I was definitely not planning on being a teacher, uh, a yoga teacher or a teacher trainer when I was living in New York City. So I did. I lived in New York City. I went to university there. And then I was an actor there for a total of seven years or so. I had my my MFA at acting um, and was like, a, you know, pounding the off off Broadway boards and <laughs> doing all that stuff. Um, and actually, one of my friends my one of my boyfriends at the time started practicing yoga and this was around 1998 and I was you know very high strung as we might we might say in yoga like vata deranged that's what we used to call ourselves <laughs> like we are vata deranged I certainly was running around like a million jobs a million auditions and everything was very competitive and he said go to yoga and so I went to yoga with I remember very clearly it was a studio uh, near Union Square, and it was an Ishta yoga studio at that time, or B Yoga, with mm -hmm. Alan Finger, his crew, and they're just amazing. And um, I took it, and I thought, wow, it was so grounding. And until that time, I'd basically been doing something like I did a lot of dance, and I did a lot of gym stuff. And doing yoga was just a way to be someplace that wasn't competitive, too, right? It's mm -hmm. You're competitive with yourself, maybe, but I didn't have to worry about what I looked like in the class. It wasn't, it wasn't an audition. And it was so um, grounding and asked for a practice of mindfulness. And I'd say that I was very interested in, you know, I was very interested in how the world can teach us about ourselves. That was a big theme for me, you know, since high school, basically. But, th and this was a place where people were just walking that, like walking the talk of living a mindful life and of also being connected to their bodies in a way that was very grounding. And so that was wonderful. And yeah, I did my first yoga, I did my first two yoga teacher trainings there. 
I did a, a 500 hour with, um, with the Ishta people and they were amazing. And then I also did my 500 hour that took a few more years, but with yoga works, who was there, but I had access, I was working for B yoga and I was an assistant teacher manager basically for their East coast studios. And so I had access to all of these amazing workshops is New York city. Right. And, you know, then in, in late 1990s, early, like probably like now we're in early 2000 and there were just so many amazing teachers there. And so I got to just experience the the practices and the teachings of a lot of wonderful people. So yeah, and that set me off on this track, but it wasn't for several years that I became, I would say I became kind of the, it became a big part of my profession like it is mm. now. Mm. Well, you, you're a natural teacher. And, mm. and one of the <laughs> one of the things that really uh, delights me when I take your classes on on do yoga with me is where I've taken uh, both your classes and your challenges. Um, and um, and one of the nicest things is that you have clarity and you have precision in your teaching, but you also have it, it's done in a way that's relaxed and funny. And, um, <laughs> and it's has not funny. Me, like, <laughs> it's, it's delightfully, you know, that you, that even the words that you use, um, are, uh, you know, in, in the best sense of the word quirky and, you know, it's like, oh, well, she's not just repeating what other people have said. This is actually being filtered through her. And that I find really delightful. So, oh, that's so fun. You know, I think, I think my love of acting, when I was an actor, I did a lot of Shakespeare and I was an English major at university. And when you, and when you love language, you, it's just like, it's so fun to find words for things to express, you know, your experience. And, um, and so I think part of that, part of that is just teaching for a while, because like I tell my, my trainees, I'm like, look, use my words, use Fiji's words, use Tracy's words, use David's words, like use the faculty's words when, and this is for all those teacher trainees out there or new teachers, like, yes, use your teacher's words. That's a gift to you. And over time, as you experience your own practice, you'll feel things in different ways and you'll evolve a way of talking about that. That is very unique to you. And so I think um, just for the uh, virtue of practicing yoga now, I've been, I can't believe it's been like, tw yeah, it's been 20, 22 years. That's so crazy. I think just, you know, probably my, my, my nerdy love of language maybe has contributed to that a little bit because I just love it. Like, yeah. So I would say that the word, and I used it in the introduction for you, but the, the word that, that really stands out for me when I think about you. And of course, this is our first time actually, you know, meeting and talking directly with each other. So my experience of you really comes through your presence online. And, um, but I would say that the word that really comes to me and sticks with me with you is exuberance. And, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, do you have that in all parts of your life or is that, is that, uh, something that is particular to yoga? Um, I think that exuberance comes because I really love teaching. And so, no, I don't have it in all areas of my life. Like I, you know. I don't watch Netflix exuberantly, I would say, you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, but I, but I really enjoy teaching and I love sharing. And I think because I, I think yoga is so valuable whenever I'm teaching something that I feel connected to and excited to share with others. And there's this reciprocity that happens in that. Um, and there's a heartful exchange. I think that creates a kind of energy for me and that creates a kind of exuberance. And I really do love to share what I know with others. And so I think that's where that energy comes from. Yeah. I get that, you know, I get excited about doing that. That's wonderful. I, I have a question for you because um, it, uh, you have a master's in professional instructional designing. What is that? I know it's so weird. So <laughs> It's like, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, instructional systems and learning technologies is it's an, and it's what's hilarious is it's a master's of science, which is very funny because I am the least mathematically like oriented person that I know. <laughs> it's like, but anyways, but so what happened is that I, okay. So I was, I was still at my job at Y Yoga and I was looking around and I'd, I'd taken a bunch of, of courses with teachers that I really loved. Like 
just excellent, excellent yogis. And I, but we were starting to see the online stuff. This is before COVID. So it's before things got really hot, but it was, you know, we, I wanted to take classes with like Carlos Pomeda, who's this beautiful Spanish teacher that I've studied with in person several times, but he has this online course and I wanted to take that. Or do you want, you know, you want to take this on USARA intensive with someone who lives in Austin. And so, you know, there's these online things are starting to happen. And so I took a couple of them and I was, I was like, there's, I was like, this isn't, this isn't it. Like, this isn't, it's like, I'm missing it because I know this teacher, I know how amazing and compelling they are. And yet the online isn't capturing their essence. It's not catch, it's not enabling them to transmit their knowledge effectively. And so, huh. And I'm thinking I'm a, I love teaching. And at that point I'd been in teacher training quite a while and was thinking of, well, of course I want to create you know, some online offerings. I see that that's going to be important in the way the world is. And so, but I don't want to do it poorly. I want to do it with expertise and skillfully. And so me, I love learning. Like I'm always in some sort of course. And so, you know, instead, and so I looked at these courses and my sister's also, interestingly enough, she's in the online world of education. And so we were looking at all these courses and taking, I thought, well, maybe I'll just take a certificate course in online learning so I can learn how to do it properly. And the cost um, at the place I went to at FSU for the certificate course and for the fully the full master's program, even though it was twice as long, was the same because of the way they evaluated the credits. And so, of course, I'm like, well, why not do the master's? You know, it'll only take me three years. No problem. And so and so that's how I embarked on getting my master's in. And and, it, you know, I'm really glad that I that I did. Um, I thought I was going into it to learn how to use technology, which is definitely part of it, but it's, it's really not about that. It, it's about just how do you reframe a process of thinking so that you put the student at the front rather than the teacher at the front. And if I could summarize it that way, I'd say that's it. Um, and so through doing that, then I became more adept at being able to, I think, create effective online courses. And so our Do Yoga With Me online teacher training program was the product of that, like, which I think really serves it. It's designed to be online. Um, and then the courses that I create, I, I feel like are, are, um, are solid. I feel like, okay, they're educationally sound. They're kind of doing what I want them to do. And now I can help other people kind of create that process for all of their own work. So to empower people to create a course that not only is like from the heart and, you know, expresses them, but also they can trust that, oh, by doing this process, I've created something which is also going to really be of benefit and clear to the student. And so, yeah, so that's how I got into that. <laughs> so why, why is it important for there to be more teachers of yoga in the world who are of the caliber that, um, that you find, uh, you know, essential or, or, or useful or, mm -hmm. Why, well, why more yoga teachers? Oh, I think it's actually more important that there's heartened yoga practitioners, but I think teacher training just happens to be a way in which we, um, in which we dive much deeper into the practice. Like you can get, you can, you, you can be an amazing practitioner and have a lot of um, access to different parts of the practice through just being a student. But when you take a teacher training, it's generally because it's so it's 200 hours. So it opens the window into a deeper world of what the, the practice is actually intended to be, which is so heartful and about meditation and self-realization. And there's all of these deep spiritual practices for self-awareness in that. And we don't know, you get that, you experience that on the mat, of course, people come back because of that, but there's much more depth than a teacher training. Now, do I feel like there necessarily needs to be more yoga teachers in the world. I'd say if you love teaching yoga, great. But I'd say for most of my students, at least half, they come in to do a teacher training because they love the practice and they want it to infuse their life more and they want to be more skillful with it and they want to connect to it more. And teacher training provides that. And in terms of teacher trainings and the quality of teacher trainings, I mean, you can take a teacher training for lots of different reasons. You could teach a to take a teacher training, not to be a teacher, but just because you want the experience of this particular teacher and you want to go to Bali and study with him or her and just have this amazing kind of in-depth experience. And that might not teach you to teach yoga well at all. And that's fine if that's the experience you want. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to look down my nose at teacher trainings that don't actually teach you to teach. However, however, because there's great value in those kinds of experiences. But if you want to be a, uh, 
a skillful yoga teacher, then I suggest you take a teacher training that will actually teach you how to teach because not all of them do as strange as that might sound. Yeah. And what are some, I was on your YouTube uh, channel and, um, and one of the things that I loved about it was that you have um, some very specific uh, foci that you really dive into with a couple of gems. And I thought that is such a good uh, way because I know that when I'm taking in information, uh, if too much gets thrown at me at the same time, uh, it's hard for me to assimilate it all. But if you give me a couple of really good gems, I am like happy as a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can take that. I mean, do you remember any of the particular ones you're thinking about? Were they more about the practice? Like, was that what they um, were? A bunch of they were on. about how to be effective as a teacher. Oh, um, yeah. Right. Yes. So it, there were um, things about language, for example, and also right. about uh, the order that you do things in that, you know, you give a, a physical prompt that's very clear, sort of short and precise, but then you ground the person in the body, for example. Um, right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I love, I mean, I love, I think that my my target demographic, if you will, or the people that I love to speak to, just because I think that I can offer them something of value is probably newer teachers. So people who've been out of a teacher training for, you know, they're just out or, or they're in the middle of their teacher training and kind of wading through it, or they've been out for a couple of years um, and are looking for ways to just get kind of clear about their own methodology. Because that's what I, I think that if I have a, a special talent, it's for taking something which seems like, I don't know, which seems amorphous and actually giving you a clear skill to develop it. Like, that's what I think is sometimes um, challenging to do. It's like to say, okay, well, how do you teach those skillfully? What, what are the components that, that go into doing that well? And hey, let's break that down into something that is measurable and doable. You can do it by using this kind of language, or you can sequence, you can make a sequence by starting here and building these blocks. So it's taking these things, because sometimes you go into a class, you know, and you're like, oh my God, I was just, I was amazing. Like, I don't know what the teacher did, but it was amazing. But if we can step back and look at what the teacher did, we can actually break it down into different areas of expertise and then identify how they did that skillfully. And once we do that, then that's something that you can also learn how to do. So I think that's, that's that's what's fun to do. And that's kind of, that's hopefully what I'm able to offer people is to give them some clarity into those little things. Yeah. I, I went through a 200 hour yoga teacher training, which was awesome. And it was, uh, it was in two parts, two weeks break, and then two more weeks. Um, but one of the things, and, and probably while I went in it, I did want to be sharing what I, uh, you know, learned because of how much, uh, benefit. I feel like I, uh, I, I feel myself from my own practice, um, and wanting to share that. But, um, but one of the things that I really learned is this is sort of a bottomless, I mean, you could be <laughs> learning about yoga forever. There are so many systems and there's so much, uh, depth to, uh, why things are done the way they are. And I know that the, the asanas are, are really more of a recent thing, but the philosophies and the, uh, uh, the foundations, they're so deep. Um, yeah. there, there was a, a, I think it was, I think it was on your YouTube station that you were your YouTube channel that you were also talking about the yoga sutras. Um, yes, that's been a recent little project of mine. In fact, I'm launching a video this morning on the yamas, which is, are so fun, as you know. Oh, it's like, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Right? And these are things that, I mean, yamas and niyamas, maybe if you hear the words, you, you're going to know at least something about them. But with the yoga sutras, if you're reading them without somebody to help guide you through it, I think it's a little harder to stick with it. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah, that you need a guide. And sometimes mm -hmm. a guide could be a really good book. There are some books out there, some translations that are um, that are very, um, you know, it's like having your hand held through them. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. And having and having several different teachers because there's people have different takes on them and there's different sort of facets to them. And yeah, but 
I, I agree. It's a bottomless pull, Ellen. It's, and that's what's so ex <laughs> exciting about it. It's, it's, it's like, well, I tell my, my students, like when you come out of your teacher training, just follow your fascination. Like what, what speaks to you? So are you like really drawn to the yoga sutra? You know, you could spend the next five years on that if you wanted to, or right. I know. <laughs> And when there is a teacher who who is sharing something of what they're excited about, it's the excitement in itself that really sparks, uh, I think, a desire to learn more. You know, oh wow, you know that that it can result in this sort of excitement. How cool is that? You know, right? I don't know so, it's so much fun. Um. I'm curious, uh, I can, I can now knowing, which I didn't know before that you are, a, a trained actor as well. Um, just wondering about, I'm sure that there are ways that, that, that comes in handy. I think it must come in handy in all parts of life. Um, are there, are there ways that you miss the actual acting on a stage or in whatever form you had acted in before? Um, yeah. is it something that That's... comes into your life in, in a variety of ways now? Well, I think, yes, I, I think, uh, I do miss it. I do really love it. There's something about it, but I think that being a yoga teacher, um, there are similarities in theater. So was, did mostly theater in theater and in uh, yoga teaching. And well, first of all, it makes it easier. If you, if you're an actor, it's easier to get up in front of everybody and do your teacher training practicum. You know, you're, everybody's nervous, but as an actor, you're used to being, you're just, you're, you're more nervous tolerant. You're like, Oh, I'm used to being terrified. So there's a little bit, it makes it easier to get up. It makes it a little easier to speak clearly because you had that kind of training, you know, to speak and hold space. But I think that the similarities between the two is that in yoga and in theater, if you know, there's there's a sense of creating a magical space, a magical space which is not bound by time, it's not bound by geography. It's like we're creating a container here to engage in like this transformational process or in this this adventure together. And so there's a similarity between the, those two, that yeah. that that space holding, and that's what I really love, and that's why COVID's been so sad is not having the people not being in community with people to create space together because when we have 20 people creating that energy and bringing their awareness into a space whether that's hey i'm we're all focused on watching the stage or we're all focused here on our breath and movement it creates a kind of magical focus i think it, it creates this kind of um yeah it creates a real presence that i think is greater than the sum of its parts and so mm. I think that's really, I think that's a similarity between the two. Um, and also I, the way that I teach now, I love to teach from like heartful stories. So I love theming. And so theming and so the, the, the aspect of storytelling that comes into my teaching, I think is related to being a storyteller as an actor. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, how do we look at the human experience and and create more awareness, create more compassion, find the light in ourselves, and especially find the light in the dark. And this is also why I wrote the book. I, it sounds like a very light, fluffy book, Head Over Heels, A Yogi's Guide to Dating. It's like super like, woo, but it's actually, it's about darkness too. It's about relationships and struggle and how we find ourselves and act with integrity in that. And so I think that's similar. It's like, wow, how do we, yeah, how do we life is life is as the buddha says life is suffering there's light life is hard and how do we navigate and elevate ourselves through the process of life rather than skirt around it and so i think that's similar between those two worlds as well but i've never thought about that in, in that way until just now so i really appreciate you asking that question that's really fun uh to to think about uh you know just how much uh how much similarity there can be and how useful it can be to uh, to bring story into a practice uh, that actually then helps to probably connect everybody to whatever it is that you're learning because it's so genuinely from you. Um, so that that's yeah. really that's really incredible. Um, and then what's what's 
what's down the road for you? Uh, do you have do you have thoughts about what's coming? It's interesting, you know. Um, right now, I'm creating. I mean, of course, I think like, well, what courses am I creating right now? My partner is Gil Headley, who's a he's very well known in the anatomy and fascia. <laughs> Someone said fashion. I was like, definitely not fascia. <laughs> Neither of us are real fashion place, but fascia. And so he, but he's an integral anatomy. He he is a somanat and he and came up with the term integral anatomy 25 years ago to offer an alternative to sort of the conventional regional anatomy model. And it's such a, the way that he approaches anatomy is from such a place of seeing connection, honoring the individual, seeing wholeness, seeing like the everything together. And it's, and he really makes reference to the natural world and sees us as part of that. So it's this beautiful mm -hmm. framing of deep anatomical knowledge, but through something that feels much more connected and whole. So I've, um, I'm creating a program with him right now, which is going to be integral anatomy for yogis. So I'm bringing his, his framework and his perspective. I'm, I love anatomy and studied it for a long time. So, and um, so I'm bringing our two worlds together to, to give our, to do kind of like a 30 hour anatomy course. So that's one thing that's on the horizon. The other thing I'm so excited about is that finally, because of the relaxation um, in COVID restrictions, we're finally running our in-person retreat for our do yoga with me teacher training. So that's kind of short term that's mm -hmm. happening this fall. <gasps> I'm so excited to meet my students in person. You know, yeah. I've been working with yeah. them on Zoom for like two years and yeah, so that's coming down the pipeline. Um, I mean, there's always more and, you know, like I'd love to, I'm putting a bunch of sutra stuff online for anyone to watch, but I'd love to create more of a, I'd love to create a, an online philosophy course where I can go through some of that information with people just because I find it so inspiring myself. So there's, there's always, there's always tons of things, but those are a couple of things that are coming up. Well, that is just so exciting. And, um, and, you know, in this conversation, I also I just feel your enthusiasm and feel your uh, uh, ability to both connect to what you're doing, and also to convey that to other people. Um, so I want to just suggest that people check out uh, the various sites that you are now on. So your YouTube channel is Rachel Scott, uh, YouTube channel. Um, yeah, Rachel Scott Yoga. yoga. With, Rachel Scott Yoga. And then do yoga with me.com. You have a very big presence on that. And people could check out your uh you do a teacher training through that. You do um you do challenges, which are, are a wonderful way to get back on track or to get on track if you've gotten off, uh, or to start on track rather, to put yourself on a track. Um and um, and you also have just individual classes, but you also have this uh, uh, way that I think there are individual things that if if somebody is struggling with a particular posture, you also have a way of taking them through that step by step in a sequential way so that uh, they know what's the next thing that they should be focusing on if they're heading in that direction, which I think is really helpful. So those yeah. are some things for yeah. people to check out. Are there <clears throat> other things that you are wanting to get the word out about? Mm -hmm. You know what? It's great that you mentioned do yoga with me. Yeah. yeah. They, and just so everybody knows too, do yoga with me has tons of free classes. So their mission is to make yoga as accessible as possible. So there's challenges, sure. And there's a membership, but you can, there's so many resources on there that you can just take advantage of. And I'm actually, Ellen, you might like this. I'm doing a challenge. Uh, coming up, I can't. I think we're doing it September. Um, we're going to be starting it, and it's a it's what I call a micro practice challenge because I'm a big fan of yoga. Sometimes feels like it's an hour on your mat, but this is yeah. like no, no. This is like a little practice you can do anywhere, anytime. It's like two to minutes to eight minutes, and so it's mm -hmm. 14 days of these little baby practices that you can just yeah. everybody everybody can do them, and you just bring them into your life because. I think that it's what we start to notice is that we can take these breathing practices or a stretch or something like that and just bring it into the middle of our day. And it's like, oh, thank you. I just needed that reset. So these yeah. tools can become really practical for us to use mm -hmm. to, to, to really kind of wrangle our life and to have a little bit more, you know, equanimity in the middle of all of the craziness. 
Yeah. Um, it's also reminding me that there are, uh, you can put in at, at do yoga with me, you can put in the amount of time you want to spend, um, and, and, and perhaps the kind of yoga you want to do or the teacher you want to do it with. And, um, and then it will, it will bring up what your choices are. And I often will go back to a beginner class. So I just finished doing your beginner. Um, I think it was a oh, seven day challenge. So good. It was so good. And wow. what's so good about it is I, I just explore things that I've known or that I thought I've known. Um, and I find new things out about it. And um and I'm always challenged. I, I don't know if it's that my body always goes into the mode of, you know, uh, this is new or if it's, um, you know, something else. But I always feel challenged regardless of it's just that I'm challenged in a different way uh, when I'm going back to something that I've done, you know, many times before. So yeah. all that I, is I take is beginner important. classes. And just as an FYI, like when I go to take my, my classes with my teachers, I think one of them is like a level one, two. And I'm like, that's plenty. You learn so much from the fundamentals. It just yeah. changes everything. So yeah. 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 Oh. Rachel, thank you so much for joining this conversation today. And uh, it'll be great to get this out into the world and to allow other people to get to know you and to find you on all your various online presences, and maybe to go in person and take a, a training with you. Or, or I know you also do coaching. So maybe some of that would also be what somebody's looking for, and they could contact you. But the best place to contact you is what? Yeah. Um, find me on social media. Like you can always, my, all my handles on social media, Instagram, YouTube, that's where I show up the most are Rachel Scott yoga. Um, or, um, you can also find my website, which is just rachelyoga.com. But I mean, what I offer out there too, is you just, you can book a, a virtual coffee chat with me. So anybody can just go on to my Instagram link or the link on my website and book a 15 minute coffee chat and say hi. Like I'm always happy to meet yogis out there. So there's, those are a couple of ways you can find me and stay in touch. Well, thank you. And for do, I, 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 I was about to say, and for do yoga with me and for the inspired <laughs> living with Ellen Broderick, uh, with my guest today, Rachel Scott, thank you for joining and we'll see you next week.